Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's farming programme. If you're travelling around the Isle of Man at this time of the year, uh, incidentally, one of the loveliest seasons of the year, the countryside really does look very, very well, particularly this year. But if you're looking around now, you'll see that the fields are beginning to fill up now with the stock that's being turned out after being housed all the winter. Depending on whose farm you're going past and whose field you're looking at, you'll see um, black and white cattle, um, the dairy herds of the Isle of Man turned out, um, herds that are kept specially for milk uh, and uh, they're mostly black and white with a few notable exceptions uh, in the island and in other fields then where beef uh, is the prime concern there you'll see cattle of uh, black or the uh, limousine crosses or whatever and, and nurse cows with their uh, calves at foot suckler calves the beef industry has developed considerably during these past few years there was a time when, uh, way back in my boyhood days, when all the cattle on the island were dual purpose. They would either serve the milk industry or they would serve the beef industry. Uh, but that's changed with the demands on each of the sectors, with a demand for more production in the, in, in the milking herds and also the demand for better quality beef in the beef herds. And uh, way back in my time in the NFU, uh, when Dr. Edgar Mann was the chairman then of the then Board of Agriculture, he devised a scheme um, and he shared it with me uh, at a very early stage uh, and I was very, very privileged to, to have been, uh, to be in on it at that stage, whereby he uh, wanted to pay farmers for quality production. And I remember the meeting one night, very late at night, um, uh, when he wanted to show me what he had devised and that scheme was the basis of the present scheme that we still use today for paying for quality it was the quality headed scheme so when that came in place it it made farmers aware that they would really only be rewarded for quality stock now when it comes to beef production uh, the nurse cow, the cow that uh, bears the calf, the beef calf, has to rear that calf and feed him um, uh, and, and feed him well. So she has to milk. Uh, and to gain that milk production from that cow, some beef uh, farmers actually used a dairy influence in that cow across with, with a dairy bred uh, animal to get more milk into the beef cow. But this took away from the conformation, the shape of the animal. And so to get that back, um, it was essential then that uh, a very, very good quality beef bull was used. And that, uh, we used AI for a long time um, doing this because there were very good bulls available there. But with the reduction of staff on Manx farms, it is extremely difficult now to, and in fact almost impossible, to use artificial insemination in beef herds. And so into the island now has come this element of very, very high quality beef bulls. And I was prompted to think about this last week when I saw in the examiner in the Central Marts advert bulls for sale at Central Marts, and that was last Wednesday. Now, many years ago, it would have been unheard of for a bull to have been brought through the ring, or at least it would have been very rare. But this was advertised as bulls for sale, and of course the, uh, the man selling the bulls uh, through Central Marts was Pip Kermud. Uh, now I've talked to Pip on this programme before, uh, and he has made a business of actually bringing beef bulls into the Isle of Man, and he has brought several in in recent times, and these were some of the bulls that he was selling in St John's Mart. Pip, have I got that right? Um, w were the bulls uh, the, that you were selling in the Mart, were they imported, or were they, were they your own breeding? So, um, the ones that were sold on Wednesday, they were, they were imported as calves mm. with their mothers. The idea was, uh, or, and still is, is to I would go to the similes, pedigree sales in England, Carlisle and Perth. We go each year, and what we're looking for is a, a cow. That's what I'm looking for, is a good breeding cow. Now, if she comes in the sale with a good calf at foot, the chances is she'll always have a good calf. And... Um, that's what we aim for. We, we, so we buy that cow, if she's got a good calf, she, we'll bring the pair of them home and we'll uh, feed the calf on into a bull for here and then we'll be left with a breeding cow which we know should breed 
and uh, that's how we're really we're selling imported bulls at the minute. Eventually, we won't even have to buy imported bulls because we'll have the cows, the breeding cows will be here. Um, that's that's the the reason why they were imported bulls, but they were they were born within I'd say roughly about six weeks of age when we bought them, and you know what you're getting then. You already see the the shape on them calves at that age, and um, I, I I think what we bought they've turned out good stuff, and uh, they've they haven't let us down. So the, the the bulls, although essentially they are imported bulls, they've been virtually home reared. Oh, aye, yeah, the the home reared that's for certain, and uh, halted at home here, and uh, we do the EBVs on them, which is the the pedigree of the the mother, the, the and the breeding of the mother and the breeding of the father. We go right back through that and see do we get high EBVs, and hopefully just explain for those who don't know what 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 EBVs are, uh, Pip. The EBVs. Uh, Really speaking, in in ordinary terms, it's the history of the both the, the the mother and the father of the of the of the calf, or, and how he breeds, how they how they perform, perform milk yeah. and calf and weight gain, and if you got that, it's like having a history book on 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 the mother side or the father side. What what you're really establishing is is the genetic base of of the animal that you buy. Yeah, that's right, that's the top and bottom of it. And if you got that somewhere near, then genetics will keep coming out. Um, not always, but most of the time it'll keep coming out. Um, we always look for a high EBV, and I think it is getting more essential now than ever. And um, in Ireland, for instance, they've just introduced a scheme there where the top 1% of all these EBVs, is, uh, the, the, um, the government is now backing their farmers to buy them cattle and uh, given a 40% grant on bringing them cattle into Ireland, mm. which would be a heck of a lift. That was brought under here, like, but... At the moment, we've got reasonable schemes. Um, I think they could be updated, but um, yeah, it's a big lift, and it, it is improving the stock on the island. I think there's no doubt about that, and uh, I think the, the, the you know the, the statistics from the abattoir show that um, this this quality is rising, and and I think you would also agree, Pip, that the uh, the scheme that I mentioned when we started this programme, the quality hedge scheme, this is what's really driving it, isn't it? We, yeah, we've yeah. really been um, told you must you must produce quality, and yeah. you'll be rewarded for it. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, if you're putting quality in that kiln house now, that's the one you, you're getting good money for that. That that is reasonable money. If you don't put it in uh, in reasonable shape and confirmation, that's an overall finish on the beast. Mm. You're in the bottom end, and you can't make money on them sort of things. And, um, but the, the truth of it is, um, I, I think it, it will be mostly beef. Well, it, it's all beef bred cattle going through the abattoir now. There are, there'll be very few um, cattle going through from the dairy herd now. Only the crossbreds. Yes, and and which the fat stock is missing them cattle. Seriously, are missing them cattle coming through, in in volume of numbers. And so, uh, what's the answer then, Pip? Is, is the answer then to increase the beef herd in the Isle of Man? Well, at the moment, that's what it's looking like. Um, I'm sure the beef, the suckler herds are growing. Um, the dairy industry has uh, the numbers of cows. I think is going down, or the number of farmers definitely is. Um, I think by having a suckler cow and then producing these good quality bulls, it is a way out of the uh, of the job. It's um, we used to use a lot of AI on these, even on these beef cows. But now we've uh, we've been on your own. You can't you can't get around them cows and get them in a, and get them AI'd and artificially inseminated. Um, we've got to have these quality bulls coming through. So, would you uh, in, in breeding pedigree stock here? Would you still use AI here, though? I would if if we on the, some of the very high quality cows. I would on them, but even that is not as good as the natural. Bull. Right. It's nothing. You're not going to beat the the bull. Uh, he's there before you're up in the morning. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So you took them to St John's on Wednesday. Um, I think you saw. You said you sold three of the of the bulls there. Um, how, how is demand in the island then for, for for beef bulls of this quality? There is. A, I thought it would have been more demand. To be absolutely fair, I did. I really did. I thought it would have been. But it's the first spring sale that was there's been uh, uh, off bulls. Um. There's a number of farmers there, but the trouble is now, what we're getting in a terrible situation here. We've only got farmers with one-man bands, and they can't be in two places at one time. And they struggle to, to be at the mart and do, be home farming. And it's, it's, it is getting harder and harder for farmers to be, you know, get round to these marts. And um, the, the sheer number of farmers going down as well, which doesn't help. Um, 
We had two two uh, good Limerson bulls, very good Limerson bulls, and they, they did sell well. Um, but the week before, I nipped away to Carlisle Bull Sale, and uh, I felt the quality bulls over there were selling quite a bit better than here, even. Right. And uh, so, what about the what about the comparative returns then? Are, are farmers able to bid more for bulls away because they got a better return, or, or is uh, are they about uh, the same? I I think they are uh, they are creeping up again ahead of us again now. Um, the time to get all the payments, and uh, I think they are getting ahead of us now. Um, and starting to show in the bull sales, eh? yeah. where a bull might make £2,000 here, that same bull would make 3000 in Carlisle. Mm. Now, we're talking about bulls in a, in a very generic sort of way, but um, are there any particular breeds that are particularly in demand at the present time? And any that um, are sort of disappearing off the scene? Well, the, the, the Belgian blue seems to be going uh, well on, uh, on the Holstein cross cows. They, they seem to be the favourite at the minute. I mean, we had Belgian blues here once, and... Uh, we still use the blue bull, but uh, it's horses for courses. They're, they're not the easiest of breeds. Uh, reproduction is not at all well with the blues. Um, you're getting into trouble of calving troubles. The limousin is a lot easier calving. And um, they, they're starting to turn the corner of the limousin. Uh, they're getting the shape of the Belgian blue. They're getting there. And um, is now, really speaking, I, I would say there's a very little difference in them. Right. But the calving problem for the limousin... Or the, or the Belgian Blues has the carbon problem. The Limousin is a way ahead that way. Now, that may be your opinion, mm. Pip, and we'd respect that. Is that the opinion that you're gathering from, from the people who are, are looking for bulls, who are prepared to buy bulls? Yes, definitely, because they can't afford to have cows stuck calving. No. Uh, that's, that's the number one job, really, and that's where these EBVs are coming forward. If you've got a hard calving bull, basically speaking, it's going to cost you a lot of money, and you can't afford it because you won't be there when she's calving. Mm. You'll be there for some of them, but you won't be there for all of them. And that it, it, with, with modern bulls, then, are there many carbon problems? Um, do, do you get many? Not uh, the same, no, um, because any faulty bull that is carbon troubles, he's got to go. He's got to be out. Um, you, you only, you'd, you'd be a fool to keep him to, for a second year. I, I think I, I, my, my own experience, Pip, would, would confirm what you're saying, because I can remember the days when, when you know, uh, difficult carvings were, were sort of the order of the day. You would expect, you know, a yeah, certain yeah. number of, of carvings to be difficult. Yeah. But that seems to have gone very largely now, and maybe we have got rid of these, these I, bulls that um, were producing the big calves like that. Yeah, yeah, well... the. The cows now, um, they're, they're, they're fed well, but they're not overfed. And not just that, if you get a, a cow stuck calving now, you can't run to your neighbours and get help. Mm. The help's not there, mm. you see. And, uh, you, you know, you've got to get on with it. You got, the cow has got to get on with the job itself. Yeah. Um, it's very important. And there's no use producing big, fancy bulls if they can't do the job and, mm -hmm. uh, and can't get the calves out. Right. They've got to have a... That, that's what I'm saying. These EBVs are going to be the future. Mm. I know the the thing that's changing here and there, but long term, milk, carvings, and quality at the end of it is the answer. Let's go to the other end of it, Pip, because you know th this is all means to an end. The end, of course, is in the abattoir, isn't it? Uh, and the quality beef that we're producing there. Do you think that um, that that we are actually being rewarded for the the quality that we're now producing? I, I that was the intention. Yes. Is, is, is it yes. actually is it actually happening? Yeah. It's. Um, on a quality beast, you can do nice, you do nice money on it. You get nice money back return on it. It's the it's the bottom end of fellas. There's not there's not quite up to the mark. You really get hit hard on them. And if you look at a bunch of cattle on an average, then the whole job comes down. But so that's the big drive to get quality cattle. And uh, as long as they don't go too extreme, like into the situation where you can't get the calves out of the cows. Mm. Um, no, we, we've, we've just got to sit there on, right at the top end and um, keep looking for good cows, good bulls. Do you think the beef market will, will stand, the actual beef market, I mean, selling beef to, to the housewife, will, will that stand um, farmers um, buying top quality bulls? Will, 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 they, will, they, will it make, will, is it worth their while, in fact? <laughs> well, sometimes you ask yourself this question quite often. Is the is the job worth going on? Considering we're only getting one pound fifty a kilo, um, most people won't realise that, Pip. No, no. Uh, I mean, that's little enough, and we we you know, uh, it's only them top quality cattle with the extra bits of payments that brings us up to one to, towards the two pound a kilo with the. Um, um, that's a pound a pound for beef, Pip. Eh? That's top right. Quality yes. Beef. 
I mean, maybe that's why we're losing so many farmers. I really do. Uh, we can't go on under the situation either of producing cattle. Some will make nice money and then the others will virtually give away, not even covering costs tonight. Mm -hmm. So um, we're in a big change at the minute. I mean, uh, in the mart, uh, I was saying, yes, we've done well on one or two of the bulls. They sold very well. But there wasn't enough farmers there, the top and bottom. There wasn't enough farmers there. Um, Maybe the thing that will control it, though, will not, not be the number of farmers, but the number of beef cows in the island. Because a bull will only serve so many cows, and uh, maybe maybe that will, will sort of demand that there's a certain number of bulls needed regularly. Yes, yes. Oh, I, we could overload the bull trade, no mm, trouble. Mm. In fact, uh, they, they could be getting that way now because there's been a whole load of bulls imported, uh, which hasn't helped the job, helped it one bit. But, um, yeah, it wouldn't be long overloading. Mm. But on the other hand, if you got good quality cattle, you could always sell good quality cattle out. Yeah. You know, the, especially the bulls, you could move them on. Like, and uh, it'd be the right direction. I think the Board of Agriculture is working the right way. They want updating a bit on the, on the schemes they've got. Um, but at least uh, when you've got good cattle, you can always sell them. Do you, do you think, Pip, there's, there's a future there? I mean, once upon a time, we prided ourselves that we, had, uh, we were ahead of the, uh, in, in Europe, in fact, um, on animal health. Um, is, is there a chance that we can still claim to have good cattle and cattle to export off the island? Yes, yes. Um, if this fat stock is casting the way it is casting and continue the way it's casting, I personally, my own views, is we'll ha end up shipping cattle out of here. Um, just beef uh, cattle, not, not bulls, just... Beef, just beef cattle as, as, as feeding, for feeding on. I can't see the kiln house going on another five years the way it is. It's not going to last that long. There's no way the Manx farmer... It's either the, the kiln house will go or the Manx farmer will go. We can't go on... We're not here to support a kiln house or keep a kiln house going. Uh, we'd like it going, yes, but we've got to make a living. If them get much, much more expense the way it is, the cattle will be on the boat in a way. That'll be a dramatic change in the island, but... Well, it's either that way or we go out of business. You think it's as stark as that? Oh, absolutely. We can't go the way it is. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm very, it is a serious situation. Very serious. Um, if you're getting a, a, a killing price, it's all, all prices kicked around. But <laughs> the end price is what it comes down to. And what we're getting, if it's going to get much lower, the cattle will go. But if, if, we lose the, if we lose the abattoir, Pip, that, that won't be just bad for the Manx farmer. But that'll be bad for the whole Isle of Man, surely. Well, all these schemes that try and keep the job alive here will fall flat. All, the whole lot would go. I mean, we, we can't have, um, you know, we're, try, we're trying to improve the stock, which is, is improved. We, 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 uh, we've got a killing house there that's sucking, sucking the job dry at the end of the day, like. So, so what drives you then? I mean, you've, you've just been away to Carlisle. You, you've, you've spent a lot of money on, on pedigree stock, bringing them into the Isle of Man. You must see a future somewhere, Pip. Otherwise, well, you wouldn't do that. I, no, um, I always leave my uh, options open. If, that, if this job dries up here, which is not looking good, it's out, we'll go with them. That's the way we'll go. I mean, uh, we, won't, we won't mess around with it either. We, um, and there's a lot of other farmers in the same position. You can't, you can't produce good quality cattle you know, uh, them bulls, for instance, you just cannot do it no. and then give not, them away at the end get of the return. And not just that, the Manx farmer, he's got to get a return too. He can't, yeah. he can't give three or four thousand pounds for a bull. Mm. He's, got to, he's got to get a return. And um, if you go back in time, we had two or three kiln houses, I think, and, yeah. uh, and we had a lot of shipping of cattle. And mm. the job was, mm. it was flying. Mm. But now it, it stagnated, the whole job stagnated. And we're, we're, we're all hoping the killing house will get going and keep going. We're all hoping that. And, but when costs get to a, to, a, to a level it is, something's going to break. Mm. Meanwhile, Pip, you're going to uh, keep uh, putting good stock in front of Manx farmers to use on suckler herds. Uh, and, and as I say, you obviously see a future in that. You're, you're always an optimist. Uh, and I think we've got to be, haven't we? Otherwise, yeah, we wouldn't be yeah, in this job. That's right. Yeah. But, Pip, um, we have to leave it there now. But that's been interesting, hearing your views. Um, a person who is, who is in it, who's committed to it, um, spending a lot of money in it, uh, and, and totally involved. 
Uh, it's interesting to hear your views on that. Yeah. I hope some of your fears don't materialise because I think that would be bad for Manx farming, mm -hmm. bad for the Isle of Man, and I'm sure you agree with that. Yeah, couldn't agree more. We've got to go ahead. Well, Pip, thank you very, very much for taking the time out of your busy day, and someday we'll come back and see how you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Pip Kermud, thank you very, very much indeed. All right, thank you. Well, talking to Pip uh, about um, his, the way he breeds and makes bulls available to the Manx farmer, set my thoughts going uh, and uh, my my memories as well because somewhere in in our family photograph collection there's a photograph of my father uh, in uh, riding breeches and polished leggings as farmers and farm workers wore in those days uh, holding a shorthorn bull by a halter taking him off to the spring show at the nunnery now somebody who remembers that far far better than I do and I just barely remember it but I went to see Harvey Briggs just to, re to remind me and uh, all of us really uh, as to how far we had come in cattle breeding. Harvey you do remember the the spring show at the nunnery of, of bulls? Oh yes one year at the nunnery one year at Ramsey mm. very much like the summer shows. What was the purpose of the show Harvey? Well mainly to exhibit uh, breeding bulls and stallions, uh, horse stallions, up till, uh, well, about the 1945 when they began to peter out because tractors were taking over, but mostly to show the bulls. Now, there was a government grant in 1950, as uh, I noticed it was um, 14 pounds to every farmer who showed a bull, and it was, if it was of sufficient quality, judged by a visiting judge, he got £14 premium, and that was a good help because it, it would go a long way towards feeding a bull, which mm. eats, as, eats more than two cows, I suppose. Um, the only stipulation was that he had to make it available uh, in the immediate vicinity of his own farm for people who wanted to use it, for farmers who wanted to use it. And they were widely used because that was, oh, the, yes. only, that was the only it means was the only we had one. of getting cows in calf. Yes, well, the first... Artificial insemination in the island was in 1943, but it took a little while to ca catch on. Uh, farmers, as we all know, especially Manx farmers, a bit conservative, uh -huh. and it wasn't until they saw the fine results of using good bulls uh, that were that they couldn't afford themselves, and they found that AI worked. That yeah. was the main thing. Yes. It worked. Yes. It didn't work at first, but it uh, did. Yeah. That uh, they eventually cut it down. But even in 1950, in the year I'm uh, thinking about particularly, there were 41 bulls in the Ligony really? field at, uh, just outside Ramsey. Really? 41. And of those, 25 were shorthorns. The rest would be Aberdeen, Angus and Hereford, except for two Friesian bulls, that's the first Friesians to well, come. Well, well. Amongst the first Friesians. Yes. One from Ernie Griffin, who was farming at Balnahow, and the other from Harry Comish at Ballastroke, both in the south of the island. So they were they were quite um, forward looking those people in that day um, because the short ones were were very very well established weren't they? Oh yes, nobody thought. I mean, they didn't anything of these black and white <laughs> things and, and the milk according to the, what they said, the milk was like water. <laughs> they didn't have to water it. <laughs> yes. Um, but the progeny of these bulls, then Harvey, um, they were dual purpose, weren't they? I mean, oh yeah. At the top of this program, I was saying, you know, if you look around the Manx fields today, the cattle fall distinctly into two categories the black and whites the milking herd yeah. and then the browns and the blacks yes, you know yes. and the uh, you know they, they are the beef herd but once upon a time it was just one one class of cattle oh yes they thought the dual purpose was what was required because well most mixed farmers most farmers were mixed and they were on small farms and uh, small by today's standard really and um, they wanted something that would milk and also something that uh, would give you a beef carcass. And uh, they didn't want to mess around with uh, 57 varieties of breeds or crossbreeds. They just wanted one. The, the shorthorn, not so much, there were two distinct breeds. There was the shorthorn and the dairy shorthorn. But the shorthorn as such was a wonderful dual purpose animal mm. and uh, must have uh, kept many farmers going over the years. Yes. But uh, so. Uh, they didn't have much choice, people in the district. Nearly every farmer that kept a bull, it was a shorthorn. We had one here 
fortunately the cattle came here and I didn't have to take them on a on a halter to the next farm which <laughs> we've seen some fun there <laughs> oh, Harvey I can tell you and you could tell stories and I'm sure yeah. our colleagues listening good as well yeah. of, of trips to the ball yeah. with a heifer there's a story told to of a, <laughs> a little boy who didn't come to school one day and uh, next day he turned up at school they said it was down at the Dune school and uh, the teacher said to him where were you yesterday Johnny? And he said, oh, I had to take the cow to the bull. And the teacher said, couldn't your father have done that? <laughs> and he said, no, it's got to be a bull. <laughs> <laughs> yes, which, which brings me to another point that you were telling me earlier. At the spring show that you were talking about, where, where it was bulls and stallions, yeah. women didn't attend, or, no. or were they not permitted, Harvey, or...? Well, or was it just considered inappropriate? Inappropriate, immodest for them to see bulls and stallions with right uh, standing there. So they, they never, women never went to a spring show. Incidentally, the spring shows went on right throughout the war. The summer shows didn't; they they stopped, but the spring shows did because uh, they were, of course, the source or, or the means of breeding good cattle. Hmm. So. When, when you when you talked about the dual purpose um, function of the short on Harvey, how then did did farmers select the heifers that they would keep um, as breeding stock? Was it just just the, the like the look of her, or or, or or what was it? Oh yes, I think just the, the look of the animal, and uh, if they. A heifer looked as though she would milk. She was kept for milking, and uh, there were no records, were there? No, no, no. The milk recording scheme didn't come in till uh, till late forties and fifties, so there was no way of knowing. No. So, um, and and this this business of it, it was quite an exercise, wasn't it, to take a, a heifer or you know a, a strong heifer, probably not been halted before, yeah, um, along the roads to <laughs> to a neighbouring farm. And we used to wear hobnail boots. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, they were better than wellies. <laughs> but I've seen the hobnails scrubbed out of boots going along a road trying Maybe. to hold a heifer on, yes. a, on a halter. But you'd skid in, in wellies. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd skid worse in wellies. <laughs> oh, yes, it was, it, was, it was an experience, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, Harvey, you were saying you admired Pip and Carol um, for bringing these bulls to the island. And as Pippi was saying, eventually we will breed our own stock on the island because there will be cattle of that quality imported into the island and it the, the whole breeding base is is being very very firmly constructed isn't it yes oh yes quite a few good breeders on it i mean dick ponton and willie camina in limousine down north you've got the chadwick brothers with their own breeds yeah uh, the blondes and, and the yes yeah. howard quail with his angus oh, mm. there's quite a lot of good uh, uh, bull breeders on the island and and harvey with with all the improvements in the breeding stock what about the beef in the butcher's shop now? Because th at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Yes, sure. Mm. Well, I think Manx beef is very good. Mm. Um, we deal with the local butcher here in Onken, and he has some wonderful beef mm. and more mm. wonderful meat all through. Sometimes you think, though, as we struggle to get better confirmation in the cattle, it's to get a better yield off the carcass um, yeah. as much as the quality of the meat, isn't it? It's, uh, yes, sure. It, well, it, it, that has to be uh, kept in mind as well. Yes, yes. <clears throat> but I think the breeds we're using here, a lot of people still use the Aberdeen Angus, the Limousine, Chatelet, um Blonde Aquitaine, all these that are Simmental. Uh, they do uh, produce good beef. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of the, the probably the expensive cuts are all used by catering establishments, aren't they? By hotels and restaurants, and that's a that's a growing trade in the Isle of Man. Oh yes, yes, and something that we must uh, mm. uh, try and supply to. Mm. Mm. And once upon a time, I mean, you, you, maybe you can still get tough steak. I don't know. <laughs> I don't don't get very much of it. Yeah. But it does seem to me that when you do have um, a, a beef, you know, it mm. really is the quality really is very very good and. Very proud that it's our own, our own beef. I would say so because I mean, there's no old, older cattle on the market at all now. They've all got to be killed. All prime beef. Well, they're prime beef. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, Harvey, um, someday I must come back to you and, and get some more about the, the the shows, particularly the spring show, which a lot of people will have forgotten by now. Yeah. Um, but was a very very prominent uh, event That's in the right. Manx calendar. Yeah. Uh, but Harvey, thank you very much for filling that in uh, against what Pippi was telling us earlier. It it does set the scene very very yeah. well. Yeah. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we have time for this week. And so this is John Kenyuk signing off until next week's programme.